Hey everyone, this is Ronan Ross here with another video. Today I will be talking about how to figure out what cards to sell and what cards to keep. This is a very commonly asked question on the threads, so I just decided to make a video to show you exactly how I go about deciding what cards I want to get rid of and what cards I want to keep. So for today's example, we'll be using this player, Smook. Uh, Smook had actually asked me a while back to help him sort his card collection, but unfortunately I was unable to get back to him. So, uh, here you go, man. Here's what cards you need to keep and what cards you need to sell. So, before we get started, uh, for all of you, before you kind of decide what cards to get rid of, there's kind of two things that you should keep in mind. One is, what is the color of your Warden deck? And two, what is the color of your Bounty Hunter deck? The reason because Bounty Hunters are usually the first cards I go to to, to try to sell, and Wardens, uh, are also cards that you'll probably have a lot of, um, but you're not going to have a lot of use for them because you should only really focus on one color. So if we look at Smoke's Defender team, he has mostly light, so I'm going to assume that he has a light Defender team. And as for Bounty Hunter, a couple quick swipes, it does look like he has a dark Bounty Hunter team. So we will just keep that in mind. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Uh, he has a Dark Bounty Hunter team. So let's jump into his collections. Now, if you are just looking to get some dust, maybe clear some room for 5 to 10 cards, the first thing I would do is look at your Bounty Hunters. So you would sort by Event Skill Bounty Hunters. And again, since we know you he only uses a dark bounty hunter team, what we can do is we can easily sell any bounty hunter that's not dark, like G King of Birds, Wukong, some Iltek, Fire Legend, uh, Excalibur, Save Your Sword. And additionally, because he actually has a pretty good dark bounty hunter team because he has some of the newer uh, cards from the last event, he can also get rid of Devora, the Moonbound, and Dala Avenging Angel. And I actually would even get rid of Dala Avenging Angel, the 6-star version, just because there's already uh, enough cards here um, for an appropriate Bounty Hunter team. Uh, take that back. It looks, I thought he actually had another card, but that may have been a non-Bounty Hunter, so keep the Dala Avenging Angel. Smoke, don't sell the 6-star one. So, if you're looking for a big clean-out of your, of your card collection, maybe clear out a lot of space so you don't have to worry about gems for a while. What you should do is just sort by power and go in reverse. So you just press this arrow here and flip it to so it's pointing up. So that gives you all your cards sorted by power in ascending power. Now wisps are something that we're getting a lot of in events. Like here he has several fire whips. But because three of the wisps are already five stars, uh, you would only ever need basically three wisps outside of um, and that's outside of having a six star one because you're only ever going to be able to evolve one at a time for uh, and that's even for VIP players for non VIP players you probably only need two um, so he doesn't really need these one two three four fire wisps outside of the three five star ones because he's really never going to get a chance to evolve all of them at the same time now, looking at the actual cards, something, the kind of rule of thumb I go about uh, using is support and ultra rare cards that are old cards, uh, are I just sell them without even thinking about them. So you can tell if they're support or ultra rare cards because they will sell for 20 dust. Um, the reason that you can easily sell them is because you can get them back for 30. So it's really just a 10 dust difference, and so there's no... Uh, nothing to worry about in terms of losing something really valuable. Um, so things like Sinbad here, Lepora, Thuella, Blazing Salvo, Bestet, uh, those are all support cards that you can sell easily. Now these cards like Wavestorm Clops, which you get uh, sometimes in events or from um, different parts of the game, you would definitely sell those. Those are totally useless cards. Now, the turn delay cards like Yorn Swarmers, you would absolutely want to keep. Um, 
But yes, again, support and ultra rare cards, the ones that sell for 20, just go ahead and sell them. You can get them right back, um, with the exception of the turn delay cards um, from your codex. Now, so that kind of leaves the next question, which is the main event cards. This is the only other kind of cards you're probably going to be looking at. Like here, for example, Monk Oreck and Frankenstein's Monster are both main event cards. Now, main event cards are only going to really be useful to you as historical card collections in events. So for those, they need to be five star for you to count. And you don't have to own them. You have to just have had them at some point in the past. So the question here is, do you evolve someone like Monk Oreck or Frankenstein's Monster before you sell them? And sure, you can do that. But that actually uses a lot of resources. And as you probably know, if you're really needing dust, you probably don't want to use that to just evolve some random cards that you're not even sure will be in historical collection. So one thing you can do is take a look at MTM's database and see his predictions for upcoming historical collections and see if the cards you're thinking about selling are uh, in those upcoming events. His predictions are, have been very accurate. Um, and if you don't want to do that, you can just do what I do and just go ahead and sell these cards. So I would sell Monk Oric, Frankenstein's Monster, uh, definitely Beaming. Um, and the reason is because if you buy them back just for the historical collection to get the collection dust, it's 400 dust, so that kind of sucks to do that in the future, but when you're clearing out the space, you just want to kind of get that over with, and you'll probably earn a lot, quite a bit of dust from doing this, and you'll easily be able to get that card back in the one time in the future that you might need it. Um, so going down this list, we already talked about the bounty hunters, and so, you know, or saying it's already five star. So same thing with the main event cards. Uh, if you have a main event card that's already five stars, go ahead and sell that because you don't need it anymore because it's probably not helpful. I mean, none of these cards, are, older cards, are really that useful anymore. Like, for example, Kaliba, Ghost Incarnate. You'll never really use that card in a deck or vendor. Um, so you can go ahead and sell that for 100 each. And you don't have to worry about ever buying it back because you already have credit for having it for any future historical collection. So I would also sell uh, those two cards, Flameheart, Spirit of Generosity, Architect Sophia, Archangel Mithril, we already talked to the Bounty Hunters, Prims Prism Knight, Alexa Tesla, Sunspot, Solus, Candelarium, uh, the Cannibal God. So quite a bit of cards you can get rid of here. Uh, I would probably keep Arabata, sell the Paladin Avon. Um, now getting it we're here, you can probably keep the Ovary, sell Aquia, sell Narfunk. Um, so another question to think about for the six star cards that you find, you know, what's useful, maybe will, will it be useful for Spire? You can also look at the Heaven Spire database that uh, is managed by MTM and myself and see kind of what are the types that are coming up um, in the tower that you're on or maybe you're just on the first stage. Um, and also for that, what's really important for whether a card is useful for Spire is if the card actually makes power gems. So for example, Aphrodite Lifebringer, which is a not useful card, all it does is hit for a thousand attack. So that would not ever be a card, in my opinion, that's ever useful in pretty much any mode right now. So you would go, go ahead and sell that. Um, now someone like Guru uh, Patsip, he makes power gems. I mean, excuse me, he makes regular gems because he's a support card. So you can just keep that. And again, you can sell it, keep it. It's really no difference for his support cards because it's 20. But I would keep it because you can use him in the Spire when there is an Earth God uh, stage. Um, so usually I don't tend to sell the six star ones because I've sold plenty of cards from the uh, lower levels. But if you did want to sell cards here for this player, um, you could easily sell Tundra Queen, Circassa, Orchid of Deep Moss, Sylphie, Moongrove, Tilda, Victus, Buneda, the other Buneda, Domi, Thor, Perseus, Ixtab, Summoner Camilla. Now, finally, let's get into the Wardens, which we've been kind of passing through and I've just sort of been ignoring. Um, so let's go and see about wardens. 
So again, you saw that basically we've already been able to identify a lot of cards to sell, and you don't have to sell any wardens. But sometimes you collect a lot of these wardens, and frankly, this is another uh, category of cards where you only really need some of them, you don't need a lot of them. So let's sort by power. So again, he does have already decided to have a light deck. So if you're set on what color to use, then it's pretty obvious that all the other colors are game to be sold. Now I wouldn't go ahead and just sell every other warden. I would kind of look at uh, mainly what counters they have, and that's the most important aspect of the wardens that you're not using for your defender team. For example, we can look at Demon Toad, who I already know has no counter, which means he's never going to really help you in a battle um, outside of um, Guild Wars. So that is one that you can sell because he's using a light team. So, but J Dragon here, he dispels Blind, which is one of the uh, debuffs in this current event. So that would actually be one to keep. Now, something you can also check is, okay, so uh, maybe we have more than one Warden that does Blind. And in fact, we do. So he actually has Blackbeard and Jade Dragon, and actually Blackbeard would dispel Blind at a higher rate than the Jade Dragon, so he doesn't need either one of these cards. Um, so he could sell Blackbeard if he needed Dust, or he could just sell Jade Dragon if he just needed the space, and keep the higher level Warden, um, which is what I would probably do. At f I would keep Blackbeard, because he'll be able to dispel Blind at a higher rate. Um, not all counters are really going to be that important, um, some are obviously more uh, troublesome than others, particularly like Gem Silence and Toxin. Um, but things like Alacrity, Flatline, uh, aren't a big deal inside of events. Flatline has almost no effect on you. Um, but here, like Yagadra, uh, dispels Gem Silence, which is really a pain in the butt when you have to deal with it in event and you don't have the event cards that can dispel them. So yeah, that is how I go through the wardens. I really just focus on what counters um, are available and make sure that I have at least one for all the important ones and then I know what color I have and I just kind of sell the rest uh, without any concern. So uh, that about wraps it up for how I look at what cards to sell. Um, obviously, if you have any questions about what cards to sell, you can always ask in any of the advice or question threads in the network app. Um, but hopefully this was helpful as a good way to start cleaning out your own collection, maybe getting some dust, and clearing up some space so you don't have to use gems. Again, this is Ronan Ross, and thanks for watching my video.